Efficiency is the name of the game. Hi there, Coach Sage with SageRunning.com here with another training talk. Today we're going to talk about a topic, my favorite topic. I'm not going to call this channel Running Economy Productions, but we're going to talk about running economy or essentially your running efficiency and kind of the components, uh, what takes to improve and why I think, I believe that it's the number one key to long-term improvement and success in the sport of distance running. So like I said, I've done other talks on this. You can check them out in the links below as well as in my playlist. Subscribe to the channel. I'll link to some at the end of this training talk as well. But it's really the secret because distance running, and I'm talking about 5K and up, 5K, 10K, half marathon, marathon, ultra marathons, you've got it comes down to efficiency essentially and it's an efficiency of uh well basically oxygen usage but then also people look at uh fuel usage carbohydrate uh, respiratory exchange ratio rer things like that i'm looking at the definition of running economy being how much oxygen and the numbers i'm going to talk about here are my numbers that were measured in a lab milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight to move one kilometer in distance. That's kind of a pretty set standard. Uh, so we're looking at oxygen consumption. And, you know, the other component people always like to see, and this was actually done in the, the lab. I'll pull up some, some lab video there. Ashley Kipp's an Olympian here in Boulder, and she also does exercise science in the CU Boulder lab. And they, I had a VO2 max test, which doesn't mean nearly as much. VO2 max is not the end all. If you want to emphasize something that's important, it's running economy. And I'll tell you why uh, in a second and, and the two main factors that go into running economy are your efficiency. But VO2 max is kind of your ceiling. And if you have a high VO2 max, it certainly could help, right? That's how much uh, your oxygen utilization, your maximum aerobic capacity, so to speak, uh, but if, if you want to know if you could actually translate that into running fast or even cycling fast or doing a endurance athletic sport fast, then you need efficiency. So really, when it comes down to it, efficiency is the name of the game. You could have a VO2 max of 90. My VO2 max was measured at 67, 68 in the test. You could have a VO2 max of 80 or 90, but you might not be able to run faster than me because I'm going to beat you at a 5K or a 10K or a half marathon because I have better running economy and better efficiency. And it might be because you haven't run a step in your life, but your VO2 max is certain high. So VO2 max shows some potential, some upper end. If we think of the body like a, like a car, it could be your maximum horsepower of the engine, right? And uh, running economy or efficiency is essentially your fuel efficiency, miles per gallon or, or liters per kilometer. So uh, in long distance races, of course, efficiency is, is key and, and how that works is going to be it takes into account your running form, essentially, and it takes into account all these aerobic adaptations that you've trained into your body over years and years and maybe even decades of endurance training to become that efficient as well as musculature and, and things like that, even what shoes you're wearing. So those are the factors that really influence running economy, and I'll tell you what I think is the number one way to improve your running economy. So just to geek out and dig into the numbers, I know some of these numbers not, might not mean much to you, but I was wearing a mask in the lab and it was measuring uh, oxygen uptake, oxygen consumption, uh, carbon dioxide. It was uh, basically monitoring my whole breathing. As we increased the pace incrementally, I was running five to eight minute intervals at these different velocities. And the, the, I'll pull up the screen on my computer, the spreadsheet that actually gave me that I'm looking at here. And essentially the speeds were eight kilometers per hour, 10 kilometers per hour, 12, 14, 16, 18. Now in real paces, I converted those because uh, I didn't know off the top of my head what, what 16 kilometers per hour meant. I mean, it's pretty fast. It's it's about six, 602 per mile pace or 345 per kilometer pace. Actually, that one's pretty easy to convert. Uh, but that was on the second fastest notch of the spectrum. And we started off at, at much slower pace. So we started off at eight kilometers per hour, 730 per kilometer pace or about 12 minute mile pace. Uh, my efficiency was actually bad at that pace. It was 200 
uh, milliliters of oxygen per kilogram per kilometer. So, you know, as it's such a slow jog, it's almost awkward. Um, then we start stepping up the pace. Start stepping up the pace to 10, and we'll look at 12 kilometers per hour, because that was my most efficient number in terms of running economy. Uh, 12 kilometers per hour, which is five minutes per kilometer, 804 per mile pace. Uh, my running economy was 187 milliliters of oxygen uh, per kilogram body weight per kilometer. So 187, the lower the number, the more efficient you are. So I'm using 187 at that velocity, 804 mile pace. Now we ramp it up a notch to uh, 417 per kilometer pace or 655 per mile pace, right? Getting close to that three, three flat marathon pace. It barely changed efficiency. It, I got slightly less efficient uh, at that pace, but at only 189 uh, per milliliters, and I'll, I'll refrain from saying the whole thing, but 189. So, you know, it went up a little, but not too bad in terms of losing efficiency. Now we ramp it up another notch to 16 kilometers per hour. Now we're, we're moving at a, a pretty good pace here. Um, something that I, I would look to race maybe a 50 miler. Uh, you know, some 50 mile ultras that even maybe 602 per mile pace, uh, 345 per kilometer pace. And it goes up quite a bit, a little bit to 194. Now 194 isn't horrible. Frank Shorter, who won the Olympic gold medal in 1972, his running economy was about 192. Uh, so a little more efficient at a little bit faster of a pace, uh, I think 307 per kilometer pace. And a lot of elite East Africans are measured in the low 190s, 192 for even close to three minutes per kilometer pace. So we'll get down. The fastest I got to go in the test was uh, slower than my lactate threshold, but closer to very close to, to marathon pace, especially being at altitude up here, 320 per kilometer pace or 522 per mile. That's 18 kilometers an hour. It goes up a little bit to 195 in the running economy. So still under 200, uh, which uh, I suspected actually, because I know my VO2 max is relatively low compared to some of the times I ran. Well, what's the missing key in there? It's your it's your running form. It's it's the way you're, you move blood and oxygen and transport oxygen to your muscles, to your working muscles. Uh, it's a way, it's a way that you utilize fuel basically. So, you know, I suspected my running economy, the numbers would be fairly efficient, especially around those pace ranges. What I didn't know is they would be so close, going from five minutes per kilometer pace or eight minute per mile pace to almost 520 per mile pace or, or 320 per kilometer pace. I didn't lose a ton of efficiency. Just because you're running a faster pace doesn't necessarily mean your efficiency goes down. It could go up. If you specialize in running the 5K and you're really good at 5K pace, you might be actually more efficient than you are at marathon pace because you haven't trained for a marathon or because you have more fast twitch muscle fiber. So for me, as kind of says, hey, you're a long distance runner. You have a relatively low VO2 max for the times you've run, but you could uh, hold on a bit better. And that's probably why my 5K pace and 10K pace really aren't that much different. And a uh, half marathon pace isn't really much slower than my 10K pace. Now the things that influence running economy, that's important takeaway, I think for all distance runners, whether you just started or you've been running for two decades like me, is that it gets better over time usually. VO2 max, absolute VO2 max could drop uh, after you're 20 years old, 25 years old, you could kind of max out that test and and it's gonna decline with your max heart rate going down. Uh, just, you, you, it goes down with age basically. But that doesn't mean you have to get slower with age. You could still be improving in your 30s and 40s and even much later if you started running later in life especially or you started at a lower training load, uh, you keep making improvements, especially at longer distances, and we generally see people moving up in distance as they age and mature. Maybe you started off running 5Ks and 10Ks, but now you're up to half marathons or marathons, and you could be much older, you could be a master's runner, and you could be beating these young whippersnappers in their 20s because your running economy is better. You also might be mentally tougher and more experienced and make better choices and pacing and things like that, but your running economy could also just be better because you've had the trial of miles under your belt. You've run hundreds of miles or hundreds of kilometers uh, per year or more, and then you've been running for years and years, and it kind of all stacks on top of each other. And if you have a well-balanced training program and you stay healthy and don't get hurt, your running economy is probably gonna keep improving. Now, 
there's diminishing returns. For me, I've been running 100 mile weeks, 160 kilometers a week, a lot in the last 10 years. And so, you know, I, there's little fine margins and it takes really specific training to break through to that marathon PR, get down to that level again. Whereas if, if you've only been running for a couple years or five or 10 years even, and you haven't really pushed your mileage over 50 miles per week or 80 kilometers per week, you probably have a lot more potential and upside uh, that you could really improve at, especially in the long distance races. Now, the key again with running economy isn't just high mileage over time, it's high consistent mileage over time that's well-rounded. So you have to have elements of speed training. Running economy will take into account your running form. It takes into account uh, how strong your muscles are. So some people say, oh, you know, I go to the gym, I do all these weights, it's gonna, boom, automatically improve my efficiency running economy. Well, it might. It might also hurt your running economy. If I did a bunch of bench press in the gym, and got jacked and, and put a lot of weight on, on my pecs, my chest, it might hurt my running economy, right? That's not usable muscle for distance running. It might be good if you're a sprinter or mid distance runner. So you have to kind of be careful with what influences your running economy. Whereas if I've improved my posture a bit or I've improved uh, the strength of my abdominal muscles, my stabilization, uh, with the core and the obliques, uh, and I'm running just a little bit better, I have a more balanced stride, that could improve my efficiency. Like, likewise, changing shoes, changing different models of shoes. When I go from the Hoka Clifton to uh, Tracer, and I'm running at a high velocity, I feel more efficient in the Hoka 1-1 Tracer 2. Uh, so that's just a, a small example, you know, looking at footwear, looking at running form, you do fast pace running faster than your goal race pace, you stimulate fast switch muscle fibers, reduce ground contact time, improve that back kick swing mechanics of your leg, you can improve running economy. You work on it too hard and you force a toe strike and you jack up your calves, you're diminishing running economy or you're hurting yourself. So little form changes uh, and gear changes and technique can make a difference. Likewise, the training you put in, the big miles, the aerobic training, the threshold training, the VO2 max training, the long runs, you're building this highway of, of capillary beds uh, that give you better blood flow to your muscles, right? Improving that lactate threshold, uh, improving the, the density and size of mitochondria, the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, these things all take time, improving uh, your ability to burn fat more efficiently as a fuel. These things take long runs, they take consistent high mileage, and they take a lot of aerobic training, aerobic base building, mixed with some speed work and higher intensity work, uh, and maybe some a little bit of gym work to really reach your full potential. And that's why it's such a great sport that you could do for so long. And I'm in the game of being in the long run, trying to be in this sport for longevity, because I love it. I love running as a lifestyle. Running is a lifestyle, it's a way of life. Uh, I wanna be around long term and be competitive for as long as possible. And I know that running economy is the name of the game. When you get into trail mountain ultra running, it's variable running economy, because we're changing the surface, we're changing the distance. You need to have adaptability, right? Uh, but running economy, fuel efficiency, look at it that way. It's the real key. Uh, those are my numbers. Uh, you could probably get tested in a lab, get some of these numbers. It's probably fairly expensive. I was lucky this was part of a study, so it was paid for. But yeah, if you're looking at that, you could also look at lactate values, other things to geek out on the science, get into that. But efficiency, really the name of the game, especially in long distance racing. And you know, your VO2 max could be a certain number, it's just a number. Uh, mental willpower does go a long way as well, so uh, as well as healthy eating. So thanks for watching, hope you like these types of videos. Subscribe if you wanna hear more. And definitely, uh, you can check out those other Running Economy videos, I'll link to below. Uh, check out our coaching website, sagering.com. Again, we just posted our new Boston Marathon training plan, 14-week uh, plan prepping specifically for the Boston Marathon course. Thanks so much, guys, and thanks to the Patreon supporters, and uh, stay tuned for more Sage Running videos.